How's it going YouTube and my future self? Welcome back to the Lab TCG. My name is Will and today we are going to be talking about packaging, booster boxes, collection boxes, single cards, basically anything that you might be selling in your Pokemon business, whether that's on your own website or on eBay, um, it, anything you'd like. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this. I have a whole list of supplies that uh, you can follow along with. I'm going to post in the description with links to where they can be purchased. There are some affiliate links in there just as a heads up. Mainly, most of these supplies are on Amazon. Um, I do this because I do have a credit card that gives me 5% back on Amazon. I also have my resale tax ID uploaded on Amazon so I don't pay sales tax. Um, and on top of that, I like Amazon's fast shipping and whatnot because I have a Prime membership. However, a lot of these things can be found on eBay as alternatives. Um, I went through this list. Again, I didn't find many that were actually cheaper on uh, eBay than they were Amazon, but you do need to factor in your Prime membership or something if that is something you're paying for. A lot of these things are also in the community discord that is going to be in the description as well if you haven't joined that already we have a great crew we have about four or five guys actively talking in there about starting their pokemon business talking with me about my pokemon business talking about their pokemon business it's actually a really fun place so if you haven't joined there already we do have 17 subscribers and about seven people in the discord so time to join but uh, in there i do have a purchases channel it's a text channel and you can go through and see all the things i purchased I just did all of my purchasing for supplies for 2022 because I want to lower my taxable income for 2021. So most of these supplies are things I just purchased. Uh, prices do change. I remember in 2020 early, some box prices were like 15 cents. Now they're closer to 50, 69, 70. So stuff has gone up over time, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've been using and what I would recommend as well as some sites that you can use to get free boxes, free labels, um, stuff like that, and a few printers because those are also pretty important. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, the first box we're going to talk about is going to be the 8x6x4. Now, this small little box, very, very small, as you can see, it is 8x6x4 right there. These can be found on eBay, and they were $38.34 for, I believe, 100 of them. Uh, the link is in the description for that and this box houses one booster box extremely snug So we have a booster box, right? We have this battle styles booster box in this box. It does just fit inside So it is gonna be over a pound to ship this and we're not gonna ship it like that Obviously, we're not gonna ship a $90 product actually battle styles at this point probably 80 We're not gonna ship it like this. Just close it up and send it. We do need some bubble mailers so in order to protect it, I don't like to use bubble wrap for Pokemon products that much. I do use bubble wrap for video games. But uh, in addition to that, we have the 8.5 by 12. Or I'm sorry, this is the 10 by 5 or 10.5 by 16 bubble mailers. It's absolutely huge. And these are on eBay as well. So there's seven for 74 or 43. I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep saying the prices. It's in the it's in the links in the description. So basically, you take your booster box and you put it into the bubble mailer. And this bubble mailer is super big. So now it's in there. And you essentially just fold it over like this. Right, so now that's your box in there. And then you slide it into the into this 8x6x4. Now that is a tight, snug fit. It's not going to move around. You can close it up. So that's how I ship booster boxes. Um, you can also fit certain theme decks in there, mini tins, uh, stuff like that. Or if someone is ordering a large amount of cards, you could use that as an option. Next up, we have the 8x8x8 box. This is a cube box and it's going to be able to get cubic shipping like most things. So I didn't fold this out, but as you can see, this is what it looks like 8x8x8. And I don't have a demonstration for this one. But uh, this one can fit two ETBs. So that's about the size. It can fit two ETBs. It can fit multiple booster boxes. And this is just another small, cheap box that you can send stuff in. And this is what I use mainly for one ETB, two ETBs, multiple booster boxes, and stuff like that. So that's the 8x8x8 eight 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 box. Uh, and then next we have the 4x8 bubble mailers. I actually use 4x7 four, uh, four bubble mailers. And this is for single cards. This is for single cards over $20 on TCG Player or eBay. 
This is a four by seven. I like the four by eights more because there's more room. I've noticed that when I try to shove a ton of cards into these, they end up kind of like uh, folding in on themselves. And I think the four, the extra inch on the four by eight is probably gonna be better for those. So I use the four by eights for those uh, when mailing single cards, top loader, team bag uh, in one of these and put the label on it. Um, next up, we got paper. Uh, I use TCG player a lot and I print the packing slips when I do my orders. So can't go wrong, Amazon Basics paper, ordered 5,000 pieces of paper. I use paper nonstop for a ton of stuff. Uh, next up is the craft paper roll. Now this is interesting because it's really good for video game consoles, but also it's mainly used for filling dead space. Now, whether you're sending bulk to someone, uh, shipping collection boxes or odd shaped items, this can also be used with the eight x eight by eight and some ETBs. I'm not, I don't have it, it's super heavy, it's over in the corner, but it's basically this huge roll of construction paper, or craft paper, it's pretty thick, and when you crinkle it together, it takes up a ton of space. So you can see it on that Amazon link, it's a huge roll of paper, uh, and it's just basically to fill that space, you could use uh, bubble wrap instead, which I think is a little bit more pricey. You could use air pockets, air bubbles. So that's mainly just to fill dead space so that whatever you're shipping is not moving around a lot. I do want to cover uh, selling video games and video game consoles on this channel at some point, And that is definitely something that I would use for those things because usually you'd have these huge boxes with these super fragile consoles and you do not want those things to move around. Then uh, this, you can get regular scotch tape uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You do need tape in order to ship things. Uh, closing boxes is very important so things don't fall out. The particular uh, tape that is in the description is silent tape. It doesn't really make noise when you're using this. Uh, this is super important if you have people in your house that live with you. So I like silent tape. Other than that, regular scotch tape works, but that is what I do have on the list is the silent tape. Uh, white envelopes. now. This is interesting because on Amazon you can get these and I believe the standard price is like $28 but you can do subscribe and save it uh, happens every three months and then it comes down to 25 and you get 500 envelopes so it's very important to keep your costs low and anything that I have on here before you purchase it I would just go check see if you can find it anywhere else because a lot of the prices that I found today are different than what I found a week and a half ago so when you're, whenever you're watching this, double check all the prices, make sure you're getting the best deal because at the end of the day, you wanna pay as little for these things as possible. That way you keep your margins low. But I do use these for TCG player orders. You fold the packing slip so that the uh, shipping address for the buyer is right here. And then you just fold it up and that's it. Um, up next, we have team bags and top loaders. So this I don't have a link to because these are extremely up in the air. Uh, team bags, top loaders, uh, shipping shields, or card saver ones. These are super hard to find right now. The prices are extremely inflated no matter where you're purchasing. So I would actually say the best bet you're gonna find on these is probably locally. Uh, reach out to local card stores, antique marts, sports card stores, anything like that. See if you can get bulk deals on these things. There's a few antique marts near where I live and there is a sports card vendor. They had a ton of team bags I think it was like $1.80 each. I went over there, bought a ton of them, negotiated them down a little bit, and was able to get some. So don't be afraid to use your local area for stuff. Uh, I have also, especially on eBay, when I wasn't really trying to push a store image, uh, I would use boxes from neighbors, boxes from the family, Amazon boxes, just boxes so that I didn't have to pay for boxes. Because in reality, when you're buying a large quantity of boxes, it gets expensive. But now that I have a site and I'm trying to ship boxes, trying to get really good reviews and stuff. I do want, you know, boxes that don't have random labels on them or Amazon tape, etc. So check your local area, see if local players have top loaders that they don't want, sleeves that they don't want, penny sleeves, and tea bag, team bags. Another reason why I don't have a link for this is I order these things through my distributor, which I know most people cannot get. Uh, and my distributor is currently out of stock from them. Anytime they post that they have team bags, penny sleeves, or top loaders, I instantly buy a ton of them because I know that we're having some issues acquiring those. Uh, next up is stamps. Now stamps are going to be mainly for TCG player. If you're using eBay, you have the standard envelope um, shipping option, so it doesn't really matter as much. It's 53 cents and you get your item tracked, which is uh, very cool. But if you're selling mainly bulk trainers or bulk cards that aren't really worth it selling on eBay, 
TCG player is a great resource for that. And you do need to do plain white envelopes. Otherwise, you're going to lose money pretty much all the time. Uh, so like I was describing with the envelope, and this would also be used for eBay. With You just put the label for the uh, standard envelope on top of this. But you just put your stamp on this. If you know how to mail postcards, you know how to mail Pokemon cards. Uh, but the standard rate for uh, stamps right now is 58 cents as of January 4th, 2022. So any way you can find those stamps cheaper, I have bought stamps on eBay, uh, thousands of stamps at a time on eBay for this. Uh, I'm actually about to run out of stamps too, so I do need to buy some. But really, as, as cheap as you can get stamps, make sure they're real. That's, that's your best bet. Uh, eBay, there are tons of listings, auctions for people that are selling extra stamps that they have acquired. Um, then we have some printers that I use. So all the boxes and stuff that's going to be for sealed product. Also collection boxes. Uh, collection boxes are kind of an odd shape. So I don't have a box size that is kind of like a one fit all. However, you can fit the smaller collection boxes like the Hoopa and the Dragonite V boxes that are here behind me in the 10.5 uh, by 16 bubble mailers. It's a tight fit, but if you take the bubble mailer and stretch, like put your hand inside of it and stretch it a little bit, you can slide them in uh, and then it's under a pound because it's not in a box. You can put a label on it and it'll uh, ship for first class. It's not the greatest way to ship something, but you can kind of ask your buyer if they're planning on opening it. And if they are planning on opening it, then any box damage that occurs from shipping it that way shouldn't be a big deal. And that's only in the event if that actually happens. So you can fit small things like that in there. Uh, and then I did mention in the other bubble mailers, you can slide any small products like those battle decks or the mini tins, uh, stuff like that. Now for bigger collection boxes, the Charizard premium collection or anything like that, I think your best bet is going to be the priority mail boxes from USPS. Now, one of these will not do the trick. What you need to do is take two of these, put uh, close one end and then put the Charizard box in. It's going to stick out a little bit. And then you take the second mailing box and then you put it on the other end and then tape around the two boxes so that they don't fall apart. Uh, that's probably what I would do for most collection boxes just because they vary in size so much. If you have bigger ones like the Pikachu VMAX collection box, I would try and find boxes around the house. Or if you know that you're going to have a bigger product like that, pre-order products that fit that box dimension. Or once you get it in, go see if you can find boxes locally or put in an order for them. It's just when, like the Pikachu uh, Premium Collection VMAX box is a great example because it's completely random. Like that box is bigger than most products that I've ever seen or had. Uh, not I, have, I don't, haven't sold any of them, so I don't really have a good way to tell you how to ship something like that. Uh, and then tins can be thrown in bubble mailers. Um, same with the chest tins. And I'm just looking at what finding chars are put in the discord, just making sure I'm covering everything. The ETBs are great for eight by eight by eight boxes, uh, booster boxes, eight by six by four or eight by eight by eights. And if you end up finding that you are selling a high amount of booster cases, you can either just ship the boxes in the case they come in, as you can see up there, put a label on it, or you can get a bigger box that goes around the case put a label on that and then add some craft paper so that it's not moving around. Finally, we're going to reach the super expensive part of the video. Printers. Um, I did not realize that the printer I have is worth a lot of money, new at least. It's like a $600 printer. There's a link to that, but I would actually just try and find a working printer at a thrift store, Goodwill or region specific chains. I know that they exist. You try and find one, see if it works. Uh, most printers I have come across when thrifting are like $20. So 20 is way better than 600. And then the big problem with ink printers is the ink. It costs a ton of money. I hate it, but it is what it is. On the opposite side though, when I'm not doing TCG player related items, the Rolo printer is the greatest purchase I have ever made. Uh, I've heard about the Dymo. I've never used the Dymo, but from doing all the research I did at the time, the Rolo printer seemed better. I was able to buy mine and use on eBay for $150 with the label tray that kind of attaches on the back of it. $150 bucks, all in, and that was that. 
they are on Amazon right now for 190. I looked at eBay. Some of the newer ones on eBay were 200, but there are still some used ones that you could snag on eBay, and it would not be a bad purchase. They're excellent. They don't use ink. It's 100% thermal, and you do need to buy shipping labels, but they are sticky shipping labels, so it saves you a ton of time. Now I've knocked out all of the shipping supplies that I've been using and that I've been ordering. Now I want to talk about some sites that you might not know about. So if you've made it 15 minutes into the video, this is kind of the, the secret sauce. So if you don't know, USPS.com, if you create an account with them, you can order shipping supplies like this mailing box in bulk for free. Uh, behind me on the shelf, I have a ton of these saved up. There's big mailing boxes. There are large flat rate boxes that you can use for bulk. There's regular priority mailboxes. There are small priority mailboxes. There are small flat rate boxes. Any box size you could probably imagine on USPS.com. They're free. It's amazing. The only caveat is you do have to use the shipping service that they are providing. Um, so, like, you can't send a priority mail box first class. You can't tamper with fr uh, flat rate boxes. There's a lot of uh, stuff that goes along with those boxes. So, just make sure that you are following the rules that they set forth for those boxes. And if you do, that's free boxes. It's amazing. Then, ups.com if you set up a business account with ups you can get free shipping labels it's amazing uh you can get four by six shipping labels which is what i use for my rollo printer you can go on ups.com set up a business account and if you don't know how to do that go ahead and search up a youtube video or find a link uh, on google or whatnot and you set up a business account, you go on there, and just like UPS or USPS, you can find a bunch of supplies. But the most important is you can get like rolls. I think it's like 300 count shipping label, or maybe it's 900. I think it's 900 count shipping label rolls for free for being a UPS customer, and you have a business account. So essentially, if you have a roller printer and free UP, USPS shipping labels, you pay a little bit in electricity and then no ink. So that's awesome. Lastly, th the last thing I'm going to cover is PirateShip.com. If you don't know what this is, PirateShip.com is an excellent service that allows you to use uh, Cubic Mail and other things. It, it has amazing discounts, uh, whether this is for first class little small things or bigger boxes. It can save you on UPS Ground, FedEx, basically anything you can find. It's going to beat the price. Uh, the only thing that it's really comparable to at least that i have found is ebay's shipping is also pretty spot on um, but if i am not selling something through ebay whether the, i'm selling it through paypal or my website or tcg player i love using pirate ship because the rates are discounted so pirateship.com just like the pirate ships that people rated people on search that up create an account, and then you just enter people's shipping uh, information. In addition to that, it tracks all of your analytics, all of your costs, and it generates reports for you to view at any time. So that's going to be it for this video. That's kind of packaging 101, all the supplies that I've been using. Uh, like I said, I do have more stuff in the Discord that I've been purchasing, like tape guns, uh, labels, more stuff like that. So if there's anything that I missed or anything that you want to know more about, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Reach out to me via Gmail at thelabtcg at gmail.com. Join the community Discord and ask there. But however you want to reach me, go ahead and do it. Leave a like on the video if you liked it thus far. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great one.